Good day and welcome to the Tata Power Q4FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Dr. Pravir Sena, Managing Director, the Tata Power. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, President. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining the call. I am joined today by my colleagues, uh, Sanjeev Churiwala, CFO, uh, Mr. J.B. Patil, Financial Controller, Kasturi and Rajesh uh, from the Investor Relations, and other members from my finance and corporate communication team. Uh, as all of you are aware, uh, you know, India's power demand continues to be very, very robust. In fact, uh, the power demand grew by nearly 7% in the last quarter, but by nearly 9% in the whole year. And this has seen the growth right across uh, all areas. Thermal generation grew by 8%, renewable grew by 18% on year-on-year basis. And this uh, is expected to continue in future also. Normally, the ratio of power generation growth to our GDP growth used to be 0.94 in the last decade, but in the last five years, we have seen it to increase to 1.11. And we expect that with more and more of the economic activity in the country, this will possibly in, get enhanced in the coming years. Uh, we have seen that uh, the uh, international thermal coal prices have uh, reduced considerably from a high of $400. Uh, it has come down to less than $200, and it will further stabilize as we move during the current year. And uh, this also demonstrates uh, that the price of power will, over a period of time, come down, especially those plants uh, which are operating on imported coal. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, the government is pushing for renewable capacity addition, and they recently came out uh, with an order whereby they are targeting to auction nearly 50 gigawatt of uh, renewable capacity, which includes solar, wind, and hybrid solution storage. Uh, and this uh, will get added in this, and this will be bid out in this year as also in subsequent years. So uh, a huge amount of push is being given by the government. They are very clearly brought out which will be the uh, agencies which will carry out the bid and how they will do this bundling of power along with their existing uh, generation capacities, especially NTPC and HPC and some of the other uh, public sector undertakings. On the Mundra, uh, we are pleased to inform you that uh, our plant is operating, four of the five units. Uh, the fifth one is under maintenance and uh, uh, under Section 11. And uh, barring Haryana, all these states are drawing full capacity of power from this. And uh, as you are aware, under Section 11, we get a full pass through of cost of uh, power generation. That means the full cost as well as the full fixed cost and all other related cost is a pass through. And uh, uh, on similar lines, we will like, get it now. And similar order was issued earlier uh, in, in January by CRC for the last Section 11 period. Uh, moving to the financials, Tata Power has again reported a very good quarter, uh, which has shown excellent performance from all our businesses, our existing generation business, coal, gas, and hydro have done very well. And uh, so also our existing transmission distribution and our new areas of renewable uh, EV charging. And uh, this has shown that uh, we have, again, uh, uh, this is the 14th consecutive quarter in which uh, we have shown an uh, increase in tax. Uh, our tax for the quarter is 939 crore, uh, and uh, it is uh, higher than the last year. Similarly, the revenue has grown in this uh, quarter, and as also our EBITDA 
which has increased by 38% to 3,101 crores. Uh, for the whole year, uh, Tata Power report, uh, reported a very strong revenue of 56,000 crores, which is nearly 32% increase from the previous year. And the previous year itself was an increase of more than 30% from the year before. Uh, and with the EBITDA of nearly 10,000 crores for the first time, it is crossing an EBITDA of 10,000 crores and a PAT of uh, 3,810 crores. Our renewable capacity uh, uh, growth continues to be there. Uh, we have nearly 6,600 megawatts of renewable projects. Uh, out of which uh, we have installed 3,927, and the balance 2,669 is in the various stages of implementation. And hopefully, in next 12 to 18 months, all of them will get completed. Uh, during the quarter, uh, uh, TPREL, which is the renewable arm for the developing utility scale projects, uh, our own projects uh, got order of 200 megawatt from. The MSEDCL, as also the green shoe option from PPDDL of 255 megawatts. Mm -hmm. uh, we continue to get large number of uh, orders for our solar EPC business, and uh, we have nearly an order backlog of 17,000 crores, uh, consisting of 4, giga, 4 gigawatt of projects to be implemented. Our uh, plans to set up the 4 gigawatt cell in Module manufacturing plant in uh, Tamil Nadu is on track, and we expect the uh, modules line to be ready by September, October, and the cell line by the end of the year. So uh, we are very much on track, and this has been one area of concern uh, of uh, how do we ensure that the uncertainty of supply as also of price is taken care. And hopefully, once the cell and module line comes, uh, we will be much. Um, fitter and better to execute these projects within the cost that we have built. Our rooftop business uh, is seeing very good traction. We installed nearly 300 megawatt in Q4 and we also won new orders of 400 uh, megawatt uh, in the quarter. Uh, we have a very good order uh, uh, backlog of nearly 468 uh, megawatt. Uh, cost worth uh, nearly 1900 crores. Uh, we have seen that during the year our rooftop business has grown many times uh, up and we did a total installation during the year of 718 megawatt uh, with a revenue of nearly 2770 crores. And as all of you are aware, we used to be a very small uh, player in this market, but we have done very well in, in this market. Our uh, cumulatively, in fact, our solar rooftop portfolio has expanded more than 1600 megawatts, and we are uh, we are the largest and the biggest in the market at present. And uh, this is right across uh, in, uh, uh, commercial buildings, industrial buildings, as also residential buildings. We have uh, also in the last quarter installed nearly 4,000 solar pumps. And we have uh, nearly 97,000 solar pumps running uh, right across the country in various states, which is the highest by any private sector company. Uh, in uh, the green mobility space, uh, we continue to grow and uh, have a lot of partnerships. We recently signed up with the Coimbatore Municipal Corporation, as also with Gate, and uh, we have more than 3,778 public and semi-public EV charges, and nearly uh, 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 30,000 uh, home charges, and we expect that uh, this will grow in the coming years uh, by adding public charges as well as free charges and home charges. In our TND business, uh, we continue to perform very well and have been given huge number of awards in different uh, areas, whether it is in terms of transmission operations in Mumbai or the distribution business in Delhi, Mumbai, and in Odisha. And uh, all our distribution companies have been doing exceedingly well. Uh, specific mention is to the Odisha distribution business, uh, where all the four discounts have uh, reported very huge reduction in AT&C losses. And uh, what we have seen has 
is that uh, during the quarter, uh, the pack from the Odisha discounts has increased by nearly 30%. And for the whole year, the, the Odisha discounts have, uh, have reported a pack of uh, nearly rupees 253 crores. Uh, we have also been very conscious that our balance sheet should be very healthy and our debt has been reduced by nearly 2,800 crores in the March quarters and our debt is now uh, 35,328 crores. Uh, this is uh, because of very healthy operating performance, equity infusion by our strategic partners and also working capital release. So, a uh, lot of our investment, uh, and last year we did nearly 6,600 crores of investment, has come from the internal accruals and the savings that we have done. And uh, we expect that going forward, uh, when we are targeting that in FY24, we will do an investment of nearly 12,000 crores, uh, which includes the investment in the new manufacturing plant, uh, renewable projects, uh, both group captive as well as utility. <coughs> and our existing transmission and distribution businesses in Delhi, Mumbai, Lisa, will be able to uh, get most of this money from our internal accruals and the operating profit that we make. Uh, acknowledging our efforts on debt reduction, S&P Global Ratings have upgraded uh, Tata Power's consolidated credit rating from BB to BB+. Plus and standalone credit rating from BB- minus to BB with a very stable outlook. Tatapar has also been awarded the India's Best Annual Report Award by Free Press General and Grant Thornton for 2021 uh, for the quality of financial reporting and the disclosures. Uh, Tatapar continues to be moving steadily in its long-term aspirations to uh, build various businesses uh, which give sustained performance as has been seen in last so many quarters. And uh, this is uh, also uh, visible in the improvements that have been seen in various operational and financial metrics in each of the uh, quarters and in each of the businesses. Uh, I do look forward for your continued support in this direction. And uh, I uh, look forward to uh, answering your questions with you. Uh, between Sanjeev and me, we will try to respond. So, with that, I request Faisal to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the line of Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, Dr. Sinha. Uh, my first question is uh, on the other income in the PNL for Q4, it seems to have gone up to 8.7 billion rupees versus 2.59 billion in Q4 at 5.22. What's driving the increase? And Sanjeev Churiwala here. Uh, let me take this question. Uh, when you look at uh, Q4, I'll also draw your attention to the full year as well. Uh, particularly, a big amount that you see. It's, uh, it's on account of dividend from Arupin. And since so many people have been tracking Telepower stock, as you're aware that a few years back, we had sold our, our stake in Arupin mines, uh, and we were kind of waiting to get our, our full consideration back. Happy to report that uh, a large chunk of the consideration, close to about 900 crores, have been received now. And we are in the process of, of winding up this complete transaction. Uh, in the process, we also had about 500 odd crore of shareholders loan line that has been converted to dividend in our favor and because this is a non-core asset sitting in the book this is reflected in other income uh, so so that is one uh, second of course uh, uh, this is the profit that you see and there are two other transactions that is also written here uh, what you see net of everything uh, is possibly in one of uh, item of 183 crore positive 
so that is because uh, we, we also had because of the situation that uh, during January, February, March, uh, we hardly run our mudra plant, and there were some take off, uh, pay or take obligations for some of the logistics shipment providers. We had provided some penalty for them about 100 odd crores, uh, and uh, Tata Projects uh, was also in the in, in the in the process of cleaning up, and as such, Tata Projects posted higher losses. Uh, on account of that, we had to provide 232 crores. Uh, but I guess uh, when I look at the overall as a year, uh, which is also important for you to consider because this will have a bearing as to how we look at it next year. So while we have this 512 crore uh, dividend from our footprint, which is kind of a, more of a one-off, uh, but we also had a hit of almost 478 crore, almost equivalent, because of Tata Project's uh, losses, which, which will not uh, incur. And for the full year, we kind of took uh, almost close to 200 crore of Provisioning. This is just provisioning uh, for uh, you know honorary contract, assuming that the shipments that we had promised will not happen. And as a take and pay obligation, we have taken a provision. But uh, now that the Section 11 notification uh, is imposed and all our plants are running, so hopefully we will we will be able to do many of these shipments as we go forward. And likely there could be possibility of some reversal also happening. What what is the provision related to shipments? I did not follow that. So uh, we, we have a back-to-back tie-up for bringing our coal from Indonesia uh, to our Mudra plant throughout the year, uh, assuming that all the four and five units will be running. But given that uh, during the year, as you are aware, that we had uh, uh, PPA, uh, we, we had Section 11 and notification till December, and for January, February, March, we had hardly run the plant. We were not able to use those shipments. And as such, uh, we, we had to kind of contractually uh, provide for that, assuming that uh, this is a notorious contract. But given that now, uh, from, from April onwards, uh, we see all the four units running, hopefully we'll be able to meet the contractual obligation. Sure. So just to clarify, both the Tata project's hit as well as uh, this hit on shipping costs will not be part of other income, obviously. They'll be appearing in the respective places uh, as yes. share of associate income. and. Uh, the share of uh, above the EBITDA line. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. My second question, uh, you know, is related to the JV uh, and, uh, you know, associate profit in Q4. Uh, the share of uh, profit uh, has fallen sharply to 179 crores uh, in Q4 uh, uh, versus what we did in the first three quarters of FY23, which is close to about 3,000 crores. So the customary slide on breakup uh, for JVs and associates has been removed from the presentation deck. Uh, can you provide color on performance of uh, uh, you know Indo Coal and Tata projects in particular, and uh, you know uh, especially Indo Coal because it's such a significant portion of your business. Yes. So, so let me give you some some high level color onto this. Uh, uh, Quarter four has been a, a significant quarter in terms of uh, what we see happening on overall coal prices globally, especially the Indonesian coal prices. We have seen a softening of the Indonesian coal prices happening. But the way that the currently the regulations in Indonesia are, they are still supposed to pay a royalty basis a certain six slap. That the government has now changed. So while the prices were falling down, uh, uh, the, the Indonesian coal mines have to pay still higher royalty. That is now, hopefully in the next two, three months, we'll start seeing some, some reversal and improvement happening over there. So that is one. Uh, second is, uh, uh, as I said, on the, on the part of uh, data projects, for the full year, we have booked uh, our share of uh, JV losses of about 480 crores and about 200 odd crores in the last quarter. So that, as, as a result of that, you see a softening in our JV overall profits. What is the outlook there, given you own 47% odd stake in that company? Uh, I think Tata projects uh, uh, kind of looks like have been able to clean up a lot of past uh, losses, uh, legacy losses. Uh, Tata Sons have now infused uh, 1,500 crores uh, in, in that business. Uh, and to that extent, our stake, which is 48%, is now diluted to 31%. Uh, but given the current planning, 
uh, we are looking forward to data projects making some profits uh, in Excel. So against a, against a loss that we have booked of 480 crores in F23 full year, we are expecting some profit to come in next year. So to that extent, yes, it will benefit us. Sorry, when did your stake reduce to 31% and so Tata Power has not infused any equity in Tata projects? No. So the stake reduced in the month of April. April 23. April 23, yes. Tata Suns has infused 1500 crores. Yes. Okay. Uh, just one more question on Mundra. If you could give us some sense on EBITDA for Mundra UMPP in Q4 and FY23 and fuel cost under recovery uh, per kilowatt hour over this period. Uh, any color on receivables which are outstanding under Section 11, uh, which have been booked but not yet realized? So section 11 uh, actually means the full cost pass through and, and, and to that extent we have started the, the, four, the four plants already. Uh, but during the year, as you see, we are we were under various different regimes. You were earlier in the PPA and then there was a special requirement uh, to start the plant wherein the second grade was agreed. Then we had section 11 for a PPA. Then we, in the last three months, under PPA. So it's, it's quite a complex, uh, you know, working to kind of just narrate everything on the co uh, on the call itself. Uh, I would request you drop us a mail and, and Raja should kind of you know, get back to you with some better clarification. Sure. Thank you. But yeah, I think uh, what's also important to note that as of now, our four plants are operating under uh, under Section 11. And the Section 11 uh, is as of now till, till June. And, and given the past trend, we would expect that this to be extended till September, October. So just the total receivables that are due to you for Mundra UMPP uh, after, you know, imposition of Section 11 last year, the bulk of the fiscal was under Section 11. So uh, are you getting those uh, uh, cash flows yes. from the associated? Yes, yes. Uh, we are continuously getting our cash flows. And even in the latest uh, appeal, uh, CRC said uh, to, the, to, to all the response to pay up uh, 50%. So our net dues, it's not a very, very significant amount. Uh, so, you know, uh, to that extent, uh, we have we kind of fees with us. Huh? So we, and and we also, also have, uh, by yeah, we also carry LCs with us. I uh, think uh, the total amount due is about 300. Uh -huh. How much? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, section 11, the amount is 400 crores. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. But we have been receiving this amount even in the month of uh, April itself. We have already received, uh, you know, close to about 150 odd crore. So we don't see any concerns uh, with, with respect to our receivables. Sure. Those were my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, and and you know, uh, good to see performance improving. Debt remaining under control. My first question is: Is, is the understanding correct that uh, in terms of pass through, when you say pass through, you are still assuming the thirty percent share in coal profits to be passed on to the customer, and you retain the balance seventy percent? Well, uh, see, the, the, we have to go as per this uh, section eleven order issued by CRC. So what it says is that whatever is the cost of coal, you will be given. On the mining profit, if you bring coal from KPC and, yeah. uh, and use it in Mundra, to that extent, you will have to pay 30% of your change profit. So this is only for, for the quantity of coal that you bring from Mundra. Uh, bring from KPC. So, uh, so if you do not bring, you will not. So, in the last year when the Section 11 period, very small quantity, I think about 15% was only brought from KPC, less was from outside. This year, there is no coal that has come from KPC, so there is uh, virtually no impact uh, of the profit share. Oh, okay, that's very interesting. And uh, any progress? Uh, that we are seeing with your off takers now, you know, given that there is expectation of, you know, high power demand going into summers. Uh, any progress on how the Mundra PK will be uh, redone? 
right now the section 11 is still 15th of june so hopefully by that time the procedure will be finalized Uh, because till that time, in any case, we will be operating the plant uh, under Section 11. And would the understanding be correct that Section 11 implementation is the best case scenario that you have? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's because Section 11 gives me a full pass through of the cost uh, yeah. without any issues. That's great. My second question is on the Odisha. The profitability is indeed quite good. Uh, are you worried on account of any receivables, or is the collection also uh, going on quite nicely? So, Odisha in the last quarter, we had a collection in each of the discounts in the range of 140 to 150 percent, and for the whole year, the collection uh, has been nearly uh, more than 100 percent. So, I think Odisha has done exceedingly well in terms of the collection, and uh, if you see the trend. Um, uh, it has been able to clear virtually a lot of uh, the old outstanding, and of course we had the ECL provision, and based on that we have already cleaned up a uh, lot of receivables which are not expected, and and that is primarily because uh, there were issues on the way the billing was done. There were a lot of customers who were not there, but they were still billed. So I think the cleaning up of operations has been done, and um, uh, what. You see, as a profit, is a, a profit after considering all these things. So, uh, hopefully, from next year, we will not have any such impact on uh, our profitability, and uh, we will see the real profit coming out of Odisha. Mind you, when we had bid at that time, we had considered that for the first three years, we will have no profit. We will have losses. In fact, the cumulative losses that we had considered was a very large number. Uh, right. Which uh, 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 right from year one we have been making profit, so it's actually a big turnaround story. Okay, that's that's very good to hear. Thank you so much. Last year, the renewable business, uh, you know, given that incrementally a lot of bids are going towards round the clock uh, kind of model, are, are you uh, prepared to to bid for similar uh, projects in terms of? Ability to capture storage, uh, trading, etc. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, the, we have very strong solutions on uh, uh, on round the clock solutions, and we have now already offered a number of solutions, which is a combination of solar and wind. Uh, we are also now in the process of offering uh, solar, wind, and storage. We we are actually now implementing a project uh, on it. Uh, third-party EPC basis of uh, solar and storage. So uh, we are very much equipped. We are also working on our uh, pump storage projects. As you are aware, we already have hydro power plants, and we are working on that. So we will definitely be coming with uh, very attractive solutions and very cost-effective solutions uh, to consumers uh, uh, to provide them. Uh, uh, 24/7 round the clock peaking powers uh, as is the requirement of the customers. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. If I look at uh, what is in the pipeline, uh, this is about uh, 2.7 gigawatt. It's almost kind of uh, more tilted towards hybrid at the moment. We already have 1.4 uh, gigawatt uh, in in the pipeline, uh, and this is happening for the first time because uh, we have seen. Many hybrid uh, bit coming up, and our wind ratio has been great. So to your point, as Dr. Sina said, as and when we, you know, keep on bidding, uh, we will be working towards it. Right. I think to you participating in the round the clock project, which is I asked, but it's, it's great. Thank you so much for this clarity. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, so I had a question on the uh, renewables uh, hybrid projects. What are the current discovered tariffs and versus the fall in the module uh, or the sell prices? Uh, where are the ROEs now uh, at the current discovered tariffs? Or some color on that? See, the no color can be given on this sir, because it all depends on where you are setting up the project. If I set up in Rajasthan, it has a different context of tariffs. 
if i set up in gujarat it has different in karnataka it is different so it is very difficult to have the same brush to say that right, so what sort of tariffs will come in which state also it depends on uh, uh, what is the cost of land in those areas and uh, what sort of uh, wind speeds and uh, what sort of uh, solar intensity is there so uh, it, there is no generalization that can be done as regards the cost is concerned uh, we had seen the cost of modules uh, go up to 32 to 34 cents it has come down in the range of about 22 to 23 cents so i think it has come down drastically so also the cost of sales and cost of wafer policy on everything has come down uh, because of more demand more manufacturing capacity that has been set up uh, not only in china but in other parts of the world including asian country and uh, also capacity additions which are expected in the country so i think uh, we are moving in the right direction uh, the slide 19 which has been shared with you will give you a much better perspective also what is the current plf being realized in the hybrid projects versus the plf we were getting earlier on standalone solar for example or even in the solar projects themselves have the plf gone up uh, compared to what we were getting last year or something like that uh, the, the plf uh, for different locations again uh, depends on what sort of weather conditions are there so if uh, the uh, weather conditions are good uh, in some places it has gone up some places the weather has not been very good uh, also extreme weather conditions we have been seeing like in the month of april uh, last few days of the month uh, there was a lot of rain and the cloud cover so the generation has not been good during that period but the balance of the month it was very good so it all depends on how uh, it is changing also uh, uh, we have given the slide which gives you the operational highlights which is slide 27 so you can see okay. that uh, uh availability of uh, all these slides sure sure sir uh, and so there's one uh, question on ppssl it seems that the profitability has gone up but the sales is down so is that just because of some kind of uh, completion of projects uh, in q4 the operating income is down from 3481 to 2958 whereas the ebitda is up from 77 to 285 and the pad is also also substantially up yeah you are absolutely right that uh, we uh, we were little selective in terms of executing the projects and uh, and that's why our uh, we didn't execute some of the projects because the cost uh, of the modules was little higher and uh, i think that was a good decision because uh, by deferring those projects we will be able to get the benefit of lower cost in future and also uh, uh, some of the high uh, high profit margin projects we could complete in the last quarter which has given us better ebitda margins so will the steady state margin go up a little bit in tpss is it safe to assume that compared to what we have been stating in the past and th- that's what is our game plan so uh, we definitely expect now that the prices are coming down our margin to go up in future thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of baranidhar vijay kumar from amanda spark capital please go ahead yeah am i audible yes sir yeah, yeah. so you uh, mentioned that for the fourth quarter the tata projects loss was about uh, 200 crores am i right sir yeah for sure so what would be the profit for the coal companies uh, in the quarter so i think uh, if you can tender mail will plan share separately with you so i think when you see the jb profits uh, gives an indication on on uh, softening of the of the coal prices and the softening of Uh, the profits, but if you need specific details, we can share with you offline separately. Sure. Uh, my second question is on Mundra. Now, uh, since uh, the Section 11 was uh, operational from uh, mid of March, uh, but we were not operating for uh, uh, reason that uh, we were waiting for some news to come in. So, what has changed now that uh, we have started the operations? Because the money came uh, uh, consequent to the decision. so they paid the money uh, and a very small amount of section 11 payment is due now 
So virtually all the money has come and that is why we have part in the plant. And so also the other states, Punjab and Haryana, have been asked by Apple to make payment in two weeks' time. So that's why we started from 16th of April. Okay. Um, so uh, could you quantify the amount that uh, came in and uh, was it in receivables which was realized as cash? Uh, in, uh, cash? It, it will get reflected in this quarter because this order was issued on uh, in uh, I think around 16th April. So uh, it, it will get reflected in this month or this quarter results. Okay. My final question is on the other income clarification you gave. So uh, net profit booked on uh, consideration got for Arutmin sale you said is 512 crores. Am I right, sir? Like which is booked in other accounts. Hey. As I, as I clarified uh, uh, to, I think, Amit, uh, we have sold this uh, Arutmin mines about a few years back, and uh, we were supposed to get a total remaining consideration of close to about uh, 1200 crore. Uh, we have been able to now receive a major consideration already in this year, so we are in the process of winding up this transaction. There was a shareholder loan of 512 crores that was standing, which has been converted to dividend. And given that this is a non-core asset, to that extent that 512 is treated as part of the other income. Okay, so what is remaining to be uh, incurred uh, in a similar fashion in the future, sir? No, so now what is remaining is to, uh, is to kind of get the remaining amount, uh, which is close to about uh, 27 to 8 million dollars. So we are hoping that money should, should also come very soon, and thereafter we will close the transaction. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Girish Achipalia from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, actually a few things. So, why have we stopped disclosing the coal uh, profitability from this quarter? We've been doing it for several quarters now. Uh, uh, coal profitability is kind of reflected in the, in the JV uh, profits that we are sharing, but we are not exclusively giving exact numbers for the coal mines because that is not warranted. But if you need uh, separate details, you can just drop in a mail, we can always share. But sir, we have been giving it for several quarters now. How do we understand the results? Because it has been a big uh, number on your profits for several quarters now. Uh, what happens is that uh, we don't look at our coal mines on a standalone basis. No, absolutely. That's why I want to look at it completely. That's why I want to look at Mundra because you stopped giving Mundra and now you stopped giving coal. I'm wondering what next because Tata Power is always known for very strong disclosures. Yeah, so disclosures are Slides also going down, sir. Uh, pardon me, but uh, I mean, like for example, I mean, I can't reconcile your renewable uh, business. APREL and WREL, why would revenues be down YOY in quarter four? I think I think uh, there are a couple of questions that is there. Is our disclosure in, in terms of the presentation this time, if you see, uh, we have made a dramatic change uh, in terms of simplifying the overall presentation. You know, you know, is an inherent part of the disclosure, right? Coal is an inherent part of your profitability. Yeah, so as I said, Mudra is now not a standalone company. Mudra is part of Tata Power Company itself. So we are not segregating Mudra from there. And then per se, if you but need a separate closing the operating parameters on Mudra as well, right? And coal also, you, you were till last quarter, you were disclosing everything. No, I think what we have very clearly said uh, also that, you know, the right time, in quarter, three, kind of quarter, in quarter three, there was slide 20 and slide 21. There were two slides. Yeah, you're right, Girish, but we don't want uh, the number to be misused by the competition in other places. Sir, and who is the competition here, sir? So that's our competition here. Sir. Pardon me, but who's the competition here? Well, I think uh, we can always have this uh, different views, but the fact is, if you need the details, we can provide to you. Sir, uh, tell me, what is the renewable, uh, why is the revenue, uh, renewable revenue down, why, why, for TPREA and WREA? Yeah. Last year, we had a one-off uh, revenue and profit that was booked. Removing the one-off, YNY is higher. So, 
so how much what is the one off sir please can you help us because the slides don't have any details okay yeah. uh, that we can give you uh, the the one off is uh, basically because uh, last year we got some um, uh, orders uh, uh which was a uh, order from the regulatory commission because of that we have taken given uh, on yeah do we know the sir please yeah 1 182 crores across two entities tprl and wrl yeah yeah, yeah. that these are the two uh, entities because the others are very small ones so okay and what is the revenue impact WRL what is the pat impact please if this is a revenue impact what is the pat impact here on this number no, this is not the revenue this is the pat impact 350 350 350 crores eh? it's about 350 crores but we can check and let you know i i don't have it off hand so yeah but that's right i i know the the, the pat number is 182 but the the, the revenue number i can share with you sir. okay sure and then capex we will include capex of 7656 crore as per your cash flow can you help us like how much has a renewable gross block gone up by and what are, where the other broadly how where the money has been spent out of that 7656 capex that you have incurred the this year and what's the outlook for it 656 yeah it's some 6000 it's a 6000 uh, so, 6267 so out of that we can give you the data i'm referring to your consolidated cash flow statement on page number 12 that's it forgot it sir because we do the uh, elimination in that because so i can give you that broad number yeah uh, our total capex on the console all put together is about 6500 odd crore roughly given take and if you look at our renewables in spite of some of the difference that we have done uh, our total capex is close to about 2500 odd crore Okay, and what is the outlook for FY24, please, for Capex? Uh, we already have in the pipe. See, uh, 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 if you have already seen the disclosures, uh, we have uh, commissioned about close to four gigawatt. In the pipeline, we have close to about uh, two gigawatt hundred. Two point three. Yeah, two point three uh, gigawatt. Two point six something. Right? Two point six gigawatt. And our order book as of now is about close to seventeen thousand crores. right so so hopefully uh, we will have a much higher capex in f12 uh, f2024 next year for the current year how much should i assume sir for my module uh, uh, our total capex sir, for uh, fy24 is about 12000 crore which consists of about 3000 crore for the manufacturing plant okay. and uh, they would be about i would say 4500 crore in the renewable for group captive as well as for utility scale so that's the type of numbers that we have and then uh, we have of course capex for our transmission and odisha this form and mumbai and uh, delhi this form so that that's what and then there is some capex which is there for our uh, uh, fgds for the coal basis so is it fair to assume given that your operating cash flow was this year 7100 crores Mm-hmm. And if you were spending twelve thousand crore next year, next year also you will have a free cash flow negative year. Is that a fair comment to make? Why well, it's a wrong assessment. Uh, I told you that uh, this year also uh, we were uh, whatever capex we did from our free cash flow. Uh, similarly, in the next year also uh, I will do my capex more or less to the free cash flow that I have. If I could also add, while you're looking at the the free cash flow that is available. Uh, for example, in in 20 uh, free full year, uh, we had an operating cash flow close to about 6,500 odd crore. But at the same time, we also separately received uh, equity infusion of 2,000 odd crore, which is also kind of setting this up, right? And, and and this equity will be utilized next year for the purpose of our capex. Okay, understood. So 12,000 crore of capex is what you're saying for FY24. Yes, yeah, so thank you so much. We want to get a higher operating cash flow and also use the, the existing equity uh, to kind of draw down to to deliver our, our capital aspirations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Maheshwari from Sky Ridge Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so one simple question. 
when we talk about section 11 uh, it gives it gives us the full pass uh, you know cost pass through uh, do we also get a margin through that or it is it only just cost uh, that we are recovering so uh, we get the full uh, fixed cost uh, so whatever is our fixed cost 90 paisa we get the full fixed cost uh, so the, that is assumed to have a built in margin <coughs> Okay, and secondly, regarding the section 11 only, right now it's applicable till June. Is there any possibility of this becoming permanent uh, going ahead, or you know, too soon to make any assumption? It will not be permanent, but it will again uh, if, if the summer condition continues and there is a shortage of power, then uh, it may get extended. Like last year also, it started uh, from fifth. Uh, Uh, uh may onwards to the uh, 30th 30th june got extended till the uh, 31st of october and then got extended up to 31st december so it all depends as to what is the demand supply and what sort of weather conditions are there and uh, very difficult to predict uh, uh, what will happen okay and one question regarding the capex plan that we were discussing previously uh, what what capex are you planning to spend on transmission and distribution in fy24 i'm sorry i missed it there what did you mention uh, so i mentioned to you that 3000 will do on uh, the uh, manufacturing uh, we will do about 4500 for uh, uh, the uh, for our ev uh, for our renewable projects and then uh, we have some uh, capex for our generation business gm gd and all that and uh, you can consider maybe about 3000 3500 crores uh, but the exact numbers we can give you separately yeah okay got it and so and one last question is your solar rajesh and he will be able to provide you exact but approximately it is in this range Okay, understood. And just one last question regarding the module uh, manufacturing project. Uh, you know, I think a previous participant had already asked. Uh, you know, what? How will the economics be affected? Uh, you know, now that the solar module and wafer costs, everything is going down. Uh, is your internal IRR also changing, or is it more or less the same since the realization as well as cost both are going down? So, so uh, when we had considered. Uh, uh the manufacturing at that time the cost of module was 18 cents with 40% uh, basic customs duty uh, with that also we were making very good uh, returns so uh, now uh, the module prices are still 21 20 22 cents so we would still be doing very good okay great thank you very much all the best thank you The next question is from the line of Harshil Solanki from Equity Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi team, good evening. Uh, my question is on the solar pump side. Sir, any update on the price revision that is expected in the Kusum 3 scheme? I don't know that. Yeah, if it happens, we'll let you know. Yeah, can't predict such these things. It all depends on the bidding process, and I think. Uh, We should hear hear uh, the, the financial year ending has just happened, and I think in the next one quarter uh, we get to know the new prices as well. Okay, and what is the internal expectation on the price side? Uh, what are we expecting? How much percentage? Price side con? The revised prices. How much okay. percentage increase are we budgeting? Oh, well, 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 see, that is the business that we do. If we get prices to our requirement, if we do not get, we will not go and do that. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. uh so thanks for taking me again sir i actually got confused with one figure so uh, you mentioned that the re uh, capex is going to be only 4500 crores so am i reading something wrong here that means they're going to be adding just about 1 gigawatt this year or is there something i'm reading wrong because if you if you are going to be adding just 1 gigawatt and you are going to be expanding module capacity the total india addition will be just about 10 gigawatt this year or i'm reading this wrong 
I'm not able to make out. Can you take this question offline with Rajesh tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as a last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I know you still have a lot of questions. My suggestion is please connect with the Rajesh and uh, we'll try to respond to all the questions you have. Also, on some of the aspects uh, on uh, the details which have been shared, if you feel that you want uh, more uh, details, more micro information on that, uh, we should be in a position to share that. Uh, it's just that uh, there are certain requirements uh, in terms of governance uh, where we would like to pass, uh, share information in a way that is uh, more acceptable to the market and also to the other stakeholders. So that's why uh, these changes have been made. But the purpose of changes is to bring more transparency and uh, to make it simple to read. Uh, and uh, uh, many a times, uh, many of the analysts have got back that it is very confusing. And so a lot of effort has been made by Rajesh and team to come up with the revised presentation. But we always keep on improving as and your feedback will be useful for us to improve and provide more data and information which is relevant and is useful for your requirements. So we look forward for your comments on that and we look forward for your feedback which will help us to make it much more uh, and much simpler and much more detailed as is required. But um, uh, in any case, uh, whatever you would require, we would publish that offline. You can connect and be more than happy to share. So once again, thank you everyone for joining and uh, take care and hope, for, uh, hope to catch up soon in person. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Tata Power, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Awesome.